Hey guys, I just saw a question on uh, Blender.chat and basically the person wanted to be able to get this bevel to look like this. So basically it's got a large bevel at this side and then it decreases in size, but it keeps the same shape. So if we go to the back, we can see it's completely flat on the top and the side. And just before I show you the cool new way of doing it that I've discovered with the 3D cursor, if you want faster renders, check out Turbo Tools version 4, link in the description below, it will speed up your renders, both still and animation. All right, so back to it. So if we try and do that over here, let's just go in and I'll set the pivot to be the active element so that it scales towards that, whichever vertex is the active one. Let's just choose from here to here and then choose the middle one. And now if we scale, it's gonna to scale towards that middle piece, but you can see what's happened is, it sort of brought it down. We can fix it manually by going up to the top there, snapping it to that top one, and then GX, and we'll snap it over this side. And now we've got the same result. But there's also another way that I've just discovered. So let's just undo that. And what I'm gonna do instead is use the 3D cursor. So I'm gonna change the snapping mode, make sure it's still in vertex mode. And I'm gonna change the transform pivot to be the 3D cursor. I'm going to shift right click and I'm going to drag it, let go of shift and then hold control to snap it to this vertex. And this is something I didn't realize you could do. We can actually, once we start moving the 3D cursor, we can press either X, Y or Z to limit it to move on a certain axis. And then we can press control to snap it to any other vertex so that it's now exactly in the sort of cross section where these two edges would meet in midair. And now if we scale, making sure this is changed to 3D cursor, it will scale straight up to that point. And if we just go into the back view, we can see that it's not going to change the flatness of the top and the side. So just scale it up. And you can see we've got that sort of control now where we can maintain the correct shape of the object. So I thought I'd share it because I've been using Blender for quite a few years now. And I didn't realize you could actually limit the movement of the 3D cursor once you start moving it to a certain axis and then use the snapping tools. So hopefully it's useful and I'll catch you in the next one.